Caymanians and residents, following the outbreak of the Ebola virus in four African countries, we have learned that the often fatal disease has reached the shores of our close neighbor and largest trade and travel partner, the United States. I'm aware that some of you are understandably concerned about these developments, but I urge you to remain calm. At today's cabinet meeting, my colleagues and I had a presentation from the technical team regarding the ongoing preparations. Following the presentation, it was decided by cabinet to implement a travel ban whereby any persons who have visited Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, or Congo within the last 21 days will not be allowed entry to the Cayman Islands. In addition to the travel ban, we are actively reviewing and considering our options to further enhance our state of readiness. Cabinet has agreed to allocate the necessary funds for the acquisition of a purpose-built isolation unit and additional personal protection equipment, or PPE, that will be required should we have the need to isolate or quarantine individuals. Staff will receive specialized training to ensure the correct use of the PPE. At today's meeting, my colleagues and I were reassured by the clear evidence of interagency collaboration and cooperation, and we are confident that as a country, we are on the right path in our approach. With the full support of my ministry, cabinet, and the governor's office, government officials from 13 agencies have been working together for several weeks now to prevent the Ebola virus from taking hold on our shores. These stakeholders are in regular communication and have developed a join-up approach that involves refining existing preparedness plans and procedures to satisfy the protocols necessary to contain the virus. This committee has considered a range of matters to date, including entry screening protocols, contact tracing, and contingency plans that cover issues such as transportation, isolation, and quarantine case management, and infection control measures. Membership includes public health, the Health Services Authority, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Home Affairs, Hazard Management, Cayman Islands, Environmental Health, the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service, the Cayman Islands Airports Authority, the Port Authority, Immigration, Customs, the Department of Tourism, and Government Information Services. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Kiran Kumar, who heads the committee, describes interagency cooperation and communication to date as extremely productive. Government is also presently monitoring the situation in Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, three remaining African countries with outbreaks now that Nigeria has been declared Ebola free. We have also been monitoring the situation in, in the United States where they had their first case as well as the emergent situation in Congo. The Immigration Department, in conjunction with the Public Health Department, has introduced a Traveler's Health Questionnaire on October 17th that will address passengers' travel patterns for four weeks prior to their arrival in the Cayman Islands. Where any have been to the three affected West African countries, this will trigger our Ebola protocols. The cruise lines have distributed similar health questionnaires to passengers before they embark and there are established procedures and protocols whereby a passenger who becomes unwell is not permitted to disembark. If the passenger has a travel history to one of the affected countries and appears well, the person will be placed in the public health office in the airport arrival hall and the HSA team will be contacted. If the person is unwell, staff will call 911. An emergency medical services EMS team will assess the passenger through a health screening questionnaire that will elicit exposure history. They will also take that person's temperature. A passenger who does not have any fever or other symptoms and is a visitor will be denied entry and quarantined until departure. If a resident, the passenger will have an option to be quarantined in a designated place at the Cayman Islands Hospital or in their own home supervised by security guards 
if all household members were also passengers or if living alone. If quarantined in the hospital, the individual will also be watched by a security guard and arrangements made for daily needs to be met in a manner similar to any inpatient of the hospital. Similar arrangements will assist the daily needs of persons quarantined in, at home. Quarantine notice will be served by the Medical Officer of Health. Passengers will also receive information about the reasons for quarantine, the Ebola virus, and how to self-monitor the si for signs of the illness. Quarantine persons will be instructed to inform their security guard or contact the telephone number on the quarantine notice if they become unwell at any time or for any concerns or need. During the quarantine period, the public health team will monitor the person's temperature twice a day. If at any time the person has a temperature of 101, they will be moved to an isolation room and managed as a suspect case. The HSA has adequate protective gear for hospital staff should a suspect case arise and is procuring additional supplies. The HSA is also organizing training through an overseas facility and webinars in all aspects of managing the virus. In addition to overseeing local precautions, the Public Health Department on behalf of government routinely communicates with international agencies such as the Caribbean Public Health Agency, the Pan American Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control and Public Health England. Premier and Minister of Home Affairs Honorable Alden McLaughlin recently expressed his confidence in our existing communicable disease surveillance system. While I do not believe there is cause for alarm, we simply cannot afford to be complacent. As the Minister of Health, I am committed to keeping the Governor, the Premier, and my Cabinet colleagues informed of any new developments on, the front, on this front. My Ministry is also committed to providing the public with regular updates concerning our efforts. I want to assure the public that we will keep them informed of our progress, including weekly updates. We look forward to working with all of you to keep the Cayman Islands Ebola free.